a while ago. There was a video circulating on the internet showing how easy it is to steal money from people's credit cards. Now with Christmas just around the corner, is a credit card blocking pouch the ideal stocking filler? Let's find out if they work. A while back, this video was circulating around on social media showing the risk that people were taking with contactless credit cards. In the video, you can see someone with a standard contactless credit card terminal approaching someone who is distracted and placing it against their credit card in their pocket to take a payment. Now, there were also stories circulating about thieves working the metro and the tube lines armed with contactless credit card terminals stealing money from helpless passers-by. Now, I was pretty skeptical at the time, and whilst I accept that the attack is entirely possible, there are an awful lot of controls that the bank puts in to stop these things being successful. And there's also another control that people don't think about, but if you're in the UK and you use the UK Tube Network, you'll see posters about it all over the place, and that of what the UK Tube Network calls Card Clash. That didn't stop the marketing people inventing and developing products that they thought that people wanted to use. And so was born the product type of credit card blockers. Now, I was inspired to create this video because I saw one in a local newsagents, and I, um, I kind of thought I might want to try those. I was interested in buying one until I saw that each credit card blocker was £12 which for my UK viewers is about $16. Quite a lot of money to pay for something that may be snake oil. Now, before we get on to testing whether these devices work, let's have a quick thought about the controls that are in place and why I think this attack isn't entirely viable. Now, I have no doubts that someone may be able to comment below with a news story showing how a criminal has used this attack, but I don't think it's all that common. For one, the credit card companies have put in controls such that the terminals have to be linked to a bank account, and if they start to notice large amounts of fraud via contactless payments, the bank will swiftly close the scammer's account. Let's be honest, there are some very intelligent people working in the banking industry, and I suspect they thought about this attack before they launched contactless payments. This is one of the reasons why the maximum amount that you can pay on contactless payments in the United Kingdom at least is £45 or around 60 US dollars. And that is obviously the maximum amount of risk that the banks have agreed amongst themselves. Um, and of course, if someone gets enterprising and just uses this attack or just steals the credit card and uses it to pay for something, £45 or 60 US dollars is the maximum they're going to get. So in addition to the controls that the banks themselves have implemented to make sure the attack is non-viable at scale, there are also some physical problems as well. The major physical problem is that of distance. You need to get relatively close to the victim. And in the video I showed you earlier, you'll note that the attacker actually has to place the reader virtually against the victim to be able to read the card. And this is why earlier I said that perhaps at metro stations, it may be easier because you've got people who come into close contact with barriers and close contact with people while they're on trains. Now, in a previous video I created showing the Proxmark long range antenna, and you can see that long range and high frequency RFID is measured in millimeters rather than meters. Now, even with a significantly more powerful antenna, you're probably not going to be able to get more than about half a meter away. Now, if anyone's done any research into this and can prove me wrong, please put a link below and I'll cover you in a future video. However, the elephant in the room is not that of reader distance, but that very few people only have a single credit card in their wallet. Go have a look at yours right now. Many people will have a lot of credit cards and RFID devices sitting in their wallet. Now, this is not an intentional defense mechanism, but it works quite well against this particular attack. For example, if you attempt to read an RFID card with your Proxmark with another RFID card right next to it, you'll see you'll not be able to get a clean read. And this is one of the issues that the London Underground call card clash. When you've got multiple cards in the same wallet, the reader has great difficulty in determining which card it should be reading, as it's going to get multiple signals back from multiple cards. Anyway, let's look to see if these products work. 
Now, I was quite shocked at the price of my local newsagent, so I went to Amazon, had a look around, and got a, a few different different brands of RFID blocking devices, and it's only cost me a couple of pounds for all of this here. So instead of using my actual bank card, the card I'm going to use here is a Lab 401 7-bit Desfire card. Uh, these are actually very useful little cards, although they don't emulate the full Desfire piece, but they emulate the UID, and sometimes that's all you need. Anyway, I've got this. As I said before, I got a couple of I've got pouches, I've got blocking cards, I've got blocking cards, I've also got a hotel card and a Nintendo card, but I'm going to use later. Here's my Proxmark, and I'm going to do a quick HF search just to show that you can see this particular card. If I hold it just above, boom, there we are, we see a Desfire card. So let's test out these cards. So first of all, we're going to try a Blackout by Ankelio, and all I'm going to do is put it on top of the card. So Blackout card, Desfire card underneath, and we'll just run a quick HF search, and as you can see, let's see if we come up, no known cards found. Um, I think if I try it the other way around, see if that works. I don't know if that makes any real difference. I think it just needs to be somewhere nearby it. Yeah, and you get card clash and it doesn't want to work. <clears throat> These RFID NFC blocking cards by, by Bereft Gears, I think, are going to work in exactly the same way. And yes, they do work in exactly the same way. So let's try one of these pouches. I mean, these actually, these were quite good value. I don't know what these were, about five or six quid or something. And I get 20 pouches. And look, the card <coughs> slips inside just like that. Let's just see what we get. <coughs> Exactly. I mean, it doesn't matter really where I hold the card, this pouch, this little plastic pouchy thing, seems to be stopping it. But something else we can do as well, um, if we grab a uh, another card, this is just another, um, another, it's just a hotel key card, and put them next to each other and do a search, again, we get this multiple tags detected and no tags found. Um, so just demonstrating, actually, card clash may be the uh, uh, maybe your best defense mechanism. If I try a Nintendo card, there we are again, multiple tags detected. But if we take this card, and this is my wallet here, and I place this card inside my wallet. Now, there's a lot of RFID cards inside my wallet, and I put my wallet, that card's just gone inside there, and I put that on top and try and do a read. Again, no known supported cards. Now, this is not an RFID blocking wallet. This is just a bog standard leather wallet. So I just want to really demonstrate to you that, yes, do these things work? They appear to, but also my wallet works just as well. So as you can see, yes, they do work. But so does having two cars together in your wallet. And really, how prevalent is this fraud? Is it worth using one of these devices? Well, only you can decide. Now, do they make the ideal Infosec stocking filler? And I do not think so. I would think a better idea might be to provide all of your elderly relatives with a little book and a pen so they can write down their passwords and therefore ensure that every single password for every single website is unique or teach them how to use a password manager. That's probably going to have a far greater impact to their lives than a credit card blocking wallet. So that's it for this video. Please let me know what you think in the comments below. Did I get it right? Have you conducted research into this yourself? What do you think would make a good information security present for your friends and relatives? Until next time, stay safe, keep being skeptical, and have fun with Radio Frequency ID.